let me introduce you to our two speakers, uh, President Sergio Rodriguez and Alderwoman Abby Beck. So President Sergio Rodriguez, he is the president of the Village of Summit. Uh, he's been a trustee for 10 years and the village president for the past six years. He's lived in Summit his entire life and he's worked in education for the past 18 years and is currently an administrator for the special education department. So he's a busy man. Uh, he's worked with Active, Trans Active Transportation Alliance in the last several years uh, to create an active transportation plan and a complete streets policy for the village. And then Alderwoman Abby Beck. So Abby is a fifth generation Batavia resident serving her first term as Alderwoman for Batavia's fifth ward. And she chairs the Streetscapes Advisory Committee. And prior to being elected, she co-founded a community group called Well Batavia. Uh, and they've worked on advocacy and education projects to increase active transportation to and around downtown Batavia. They've received multiple grants. Um, they've received a grant from AARP and Active Trans uh, to conduct studies and produce reports mm -hmm. on the state of walking and biking in Batavia. And she's also completed the America Walks Walking College Fellowship in 2018, which is actually open for enrollment right now, if anyone's interested. And maybe we can hear a bit more about that from Abby too mm -hmm. later. But um, so, Welcome you two. Thank you both for uh, taking the time out of your very busy schedules to, to join this session. Um, so I'll just start with some questions. And of course, throughout this, if anyone here who's on this session, if you have a question for Abby or Sergio, please add it to the chat and we can, Brian and I will ask the questions after we've chatted a bit with, with the two of them. So to just start things off, just curious how Long have you both, or can you tell us about how you got involved in public office? What motivated you to become the mayor and alderwoman? So why don't we start with you, Abby? Thanks, thanks for having me, Maggie. Um, I became interested in kind of municipal government after being appointed to the Batavia Environmental Commission. Um, I, I got my master's in environmental science and had studied um, land use and transportation planning as a way to mitigate climate change. So that kind of got me started down the, the path of walking and biking advocacy. And um, so that's kind of the, that was kind of my passion area when working with the Environmental Commission and got to, you know, I advocated and spoke to city council meetings in that capacity. And then it was through the walking college probably that um, I felt the most confident and, and able. I went to the Walk Bike Places conference in the very last session, the very last speaker, I don't even remember what the session was about, but the very last speaker said, and you should run for public office. <laughs> As like her closing remarks is, if you're interested in all this, you should do it. And I'd already been thinking about it. The woman that sat in my seat before was a big walking and biking advocate. And so I wasn't gonna run against her. She was already well, I already felt well represented she decided not to run. And she had approached me right before I went to this conference. And I was just hemming and hawing and debating and then had that woman say, you should run for office. I was like, okay, she's talking to me. I will, I will go do it. <laughs> and so I did. Great, that's a great story, Abby. Um, Sergio, how about you? How did you end up in your position? What motivated you? Um, well, I, I was first um, asked by the former mayor to run um, on his ticket never involved in politics. My dad served a couple years on the school board. Um, and, you know, I was vested in the community. I, I did volunteer work with um, the soccer program and, and different things here and there. So I said, you know, I live here. I have a lot of family that lives here. You know, why not give it a go? Um, so we ended up um, winning and winning a couple of elections after that. Uh, and as a 10 years as a trustee, unfortunately, the mayor ended up passing away. Um, and then kind of everyone looked around who, who could lead the village. And it was very difficult times financially, um, you know, in the state as well as federally. And, you know, I decided to take a stab at it. And, you know, the other trustees were fairly new. Um, two of them, well, actually three of them were recently elected. Um, a, another one was appointed. So it was a young, very young not only age-wise, but also with years of municipal experience um, that I, I decided to take the challenge. And we've we've come out very well um, as far as the last six years and the things that we've been able to do and move the village forward. 
Yeah, great. I'm glad I'm glad you both took a risk to jump into that position because it's yeah, it's interesting, like both of you not having like grown up in politics really to like jump into that position is uh, is a challenge, I'm sure. Um, but like so just before we get kind of more in into the details of what what types of projects you've done related to transportation in your communities just typically like other than a super snowy day like today how do you how do you travel around your community what is your how do you enjoy um getting around um sergio why don't we start with you um, usually it's, you know, driving. Um, I do, when it's nice out, I'm, I'm running, you'll see me running the neighborhood, the streets. Um, we have a park uh, nearby that, I, you know, I add that to my three, five mile run. Um, the biggest challenge is just the congestion, the traffic, you know, I always have to be careful. And that's why I don't run um, during the summer. I mean, the, during the winter, just because the snow and the ice is yeah, too dangerous. Yeah. And a lot of times, a lot of the little walkways are not clear. Yeah. Gabby, how about you? Um, I ride a, a cargo bicycle from Amsterdam, <laughs> the big ones with the big bucket in the front, and all three of my kids and all my groceries and everything sit inside there, and I'm the crazy lady on a bike, um, and then they're like, oh, that's Abby. She... <laughs> so that's my preferred, my preferred method. Um, we're a one-car family. We've made it eight years out here with one car, so making making it work with that. Yeah, it's impressive. <laughs> um, so now I guess thinking about it, like, so in Batavia and Summit, what, what have you, what is going on in your community related to walking, biking and transit, whether that was in the past, current initiatives or something you're hoping for in the future that's planned for the future. Um, Abby, let's start with you. Um, well, we've got some we've got some really shining stars. We've got a, a Woo Nerf in Batavia. Uh, the Complete Streets Coalition came out and did a tour. Uh, was that last year? Um, so we've got a really great example of a shared street that we love to share, love to show off. Um, we passed a Complete Streets policy over the past year, which was fantastic. We're installing some new sharrows um, and bike lanes on um, some reconstruction projects that are going in right now. Um, one of the things I'm really proud of uh, that came up within my first couple of weeks on, on council was that we are studying, you know, I'm going to celebrate the, the milestones anyway, we've got a study uh, funded to look at a road diet for Batavia Avenue, which is Route 31, cuts right through our downtown. It's a four lane four lane highway. It's, it's difficult to cross on bike or by foot. Um, it's impossible to bike down and not super comfortable to walk on either. So um, we are at least engaging in the study to see if we can get a road diet installed there and make it a little bit more comfortable for everybody. So I'm really excited about that one. Great. And uh, Sergio, what's, what's happening in Summit or what has happened in the past? Um, well, after we've completed um, the active transportation plan and the uh, complete street policy, that's kind of went into various grants that we've applied to from IDOT. Um, Summit is surrounded by all state streets. Um, so it, you know, any, anytime we want to do anything there, we, we have to get permission and, and a lot of truck traffic. So it makes it challenging. It's a lot older community to really, you know, look at what different things we um, can apply for. But I think one of the best things, you know, with the partnership, and the connections that we have uh, made with active transportation. We were able to work with um, the surrounding communities to look to um, do a study where we can possibly connect our villages to the Palos area, which has the forest preserves. Um, so we did a study and you know come up with a, a plan. Um, it's just, again, finding allocating funds. Um, we work with the National Park Service also. Um, and they, we have a boat launch in our community that we are trying to uh, reopen and not make it not just more, make it more than just a boat launch. We wanted to make it a recreational area where we, people can walk, people can access nature. Um, so we've worked with um, them to create kind of um, technical assistance in uh, guiding us um, how to, we, we can uh, really put to fruition that plan that we have as far as um, reopening the boat launch. Um, and any major projects that we're doing with IDOT, we always um, 
bring to the table what about transportation for pedestrians and as well as um, cyclists. And that's some, um, we got a couple of major projects that they're working on. The final version hasn't come out. I know there's an overpass that they're working on on Harlem and 65th. Um, so we, we've mentioned that, how are they gonna incorporate that aspect of it? Um, and then again, any kind of resurfacing of streets that we're looking at, we're actually looking at possibly widening a lot, a lot of streets this coming um, year um, with the hopes that now it's easier and friendlier for people um, actually sitting out on their bikes. And Sergio, what, what like, motivates you to want to include walking and biking infrastructure in any project that comes up in Summit? Um, I, I just think it makes it much more friendlier community. Um, people get out there more than just, you know, staying at, at their home or with a certain area. I think it limits people from, well, uh, if I want to go to the park, I have to cross a busy street and I got to bring the kids and, you know, I and it's so congested now, which, you know, everyone, every household has like three, four cars. And, you know, that's one of the biggest grips I get. There's no parking. And I say, well, maybe you can walk to the grocery store. Maybe you can walk to the park. And so that's one of the things that I think, you know, if it, if, if it makes it more easy or accessible and safer, people will eventually start moving in that direction. Yeah, I, I feel like when I, we were in Summit, some of my colleagues and I, and it was during the school day and there were so many kids walking to school which was really amazing i don't know if i've seen so many kids walking to school in a suburban community before um and i know that there's a lot of like youth that are um mm -hmm. you know interested in in seeing improvements and you've worked with that as as you do work in the school system um you've done some work with the youth as mm -hmm. well I saw them designing, redesigning a bridge, how they'd like to see it so that people could, they could walk over it and get to school by foot more easily. So, um, and Sergio, one other question about um, initiatives and in summit. Can you talk a little bit about the gas tax and how that's connected to transportation and summit? Cause I think it's so, an interesting case. Mm -hmm. So we probably five years ago, we put home rule on the ballot. And um, that was one of the things to create new revenue. Uh, we're next to the city of Chicago. And as we all know, they charge probably 30 cents more on their gas. Um, so we decided that once we passed home rule, one of the uh, things that we wanted to do was increase the gas tax. Um, and I think we, it's up to five cents now, but that was solely to do for um, infrastructure work, including streets and road maintenance. So that was one of the, the projects that we have. We were able to increase high bond, bond rating and now um, we're working on resurfacing and widening these streets for the next two years. So that was, again, it, it comes down to, you know, everyone have to look at different ways to that we can um, fund these projects um, that we want them to do. But at the same time, making sure that we're not increasing the property tax of cost of our residents is the key things that we were looking for when we did that. Right. Um, Abby, how about in, in Batavia, what are some challenges that you've run across or barriers to getting walking and biking projects implemented? Like, is it funding like, like Sergio has experienced in Summit or are there other things? It's funding, it's, um... I would say one of the biggest barriers is more like a, it's kind of a philosophical or a paradigm shift that still needs to happen in the community too. Um, I mean, like you said, I, my family's been there for five generations. So I have this like institutional memory of Batavia before it was a suburb, you know, that this was just kind of an industrial town out in the middle of nowhere that the suburbs built out too. So I look at it, you know, as being a place that's full of potential, you know, with a grid style and with a downtown business district like this could be a little a little walkable drivable or I'm sorry walkable bikeable place that people don't have to rely on a car but that's a paradigm that I'm looking at everything through and and most people aren't because most of us grew up in a suburb and we understand a suburb and we assume that a car is always going to be necessary no matter what um, and so it's kind of breaking down that paradigm and giving, you know, trying to, trying to get people to see that maybe we want to be a community that um, gives people a choice. You, you're still always going to have car infrastructure. You're still always going to be able to drive. But if somebody wants to lead a different lifestyle and wants to drive, walk or bike for transit, um, that we should try and design a city around that. 
and then the onion of you know decisions and policy changes that have to go into um, making that a reality. But it's setting that vision and working towards it. Um, and I think also just in my past two years, it's also coming to the realization that I'm probably not going to see that reality come into fruition. <laughs> it's going to be laying the groundwork for 50 years down the road um, that hopefully my kids will get to experience because it takes that long to kind of undo these systems and undo some built environment pieces that make that a reality. But we'll get there, I hope. I can't hear you, Maggie, if you're, I think you might be on mute. Oh, there, thank you. Um, <laughs> yes, I was just agreeing with what you were saying. <laughs> um, do you, I, for both of you, do you have any advice for other community leaders or, or for advocates who are, who are looking to see improved walking and biking conditions in their community? Um, any, like any suggestions you have on how how they might how you might talk to your elected officials or just as an elected official well like how how can you talk to your colleagues about it um and maybe abby we can start with you um i would say that it's i it for my two years it seems like one of the best ways is to find examples and find case studies and find ordinances to just copy and paste and <laughs> just say, this is um, this is something different. This is something new that we're not used to, but it's worked here and here are the reasons that it worked and here are the, the conditions that led up to it. And here's how it's similar to what we're doing here. And we should we should try this to um, to show that you're not doing something crazy and off the wall. Um, in terms of advocates out, out in the world trying to push this is, um, I mean, I could say for me, if people know me on city council and, and it, staff knows me and they know I came from the environmental commission, they know I'm a walking advocate. And so if I bring stuff up, it sounds like it's just my own pet projects. Um, so it's coalition building, whether you're doing that from the public or from the you know leadership side, but um, educating and talking about this and, and, and coming up with that vision again to push um, is is really important so that it doesn't look like it's just coming from one person or one group even that it's um, that it's a shared a shared value um, and I will say like we just don't hear from the public enough <laughs> in general so that's always my first thing that I tell people out there like if you don't know who your elected officials are email them email them right now and just say hi and tell them you're interested in walking and biking and tell them why um, go present at a city council meeting. It's real easy to get on our agenda. I know that. Um, and come and explain your point of view, explain your vision, explain what you want to do. Say that you want your kids to be able to get to school safely. Say that you want to be able to walk downtown to go to the bar. Say that you want to do these things. How can we make this happen um, is really important because the, we just have to hear it over and over again and, and until it becomes reality. Yeah, that's great advice. Thanks, Debbie. Um, Sergio, what about you? Do you have any advice for other community leaders or, or for advocates who are interested in walking and biking and seeing changes happen? Yeah, and I think Abby brought up some great points. You, you have to find those people who are doing this in the community. Um, recently, there was over the summer, a small group of individuals that got together and started just biking around. And then, you know, I went over there, hey, this is great, you know, and I explained to them some of the plans that we have and come a couple of things that uh, we wanted to do. And I said, yeah, you should be more involved. You should, you know, come and, you know, attend, you know, you'd send a lot of information from um, emails of uh, webinars and, and things to attend. So getting them to know there is an outlet, there is somewhere where you can get information, there is somewhere you can get what other communities are doing. And I think that's one of the biggest barriers is saying, yes, it is a, it, it, it's stopping us. If there is ways to work around it and see what other communities have done to uh, make it work. Um, and I think that's something that we, we sometimes struggle with um, as a municipality where it's saying, well, the cost is, you know, we can't get over that. And once that kind of kills a project, I said, well, maybe we're not there yet, but what are some other ways we can slowly start taking those steps to eventually get there and then not be, you know, five years from now, but um, it's something that we have to start looking at if we're ever going to have the opportunity to provide this to our community. Yeah, great. That's that's good advice. And yeah, just long-term thinking and like get, getting started now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sounds like it's 
what, what we all need to be doing. Um, Brian, maybe we can start asking, I see some questions coming up in the, in the chat. Do you wanna kick it off the Q&A? So our first question is from Ralph, and this is specifically for uh, Abby. Um, Ralph is wondering if Batavia has rental bikes. He thought he'd read about that somewhere and a similar bike rental system like Divi along the Fo Fox River. Yes, Batavia took part last year. There's a whole um, King County wide system now. Um, so there's bike rental spots up and down the Fox River. Um, last year with bikes being as popular as they were due to COVID, we weren't able to get the electric assist bikes. Um, we only got the regular bikes. We have a lot of hills being on the river there. Um, so I'm really hoping in future years we can get some electric assist bikes because having now ridden one for a couple of years, it's such a game changer when you want to bike commute is having that little extra help up the hills. And I think the more people that could rent them and just try them out, I think more people would be sold. So I'm really hopeful. And we have to convince the King County Forest Preserve to let us use them on the bike paths, which we're not allowed to do right now. Um, but that's, yeah, so we do. We just, we got them late in the season last summer. Cool. All right, so we have another question from Beth in Wilmette. So she's wondering, I think for both of you, is there a transportation committee in your communities that oversees active, active transportation in addition to motorized transit? And she says in Wilmette, there is no mention of active transportation in the official list of responsibilities of the Transportation Commission. Um, at this time, I, at the village we, of Summit, we do not have a committee. Um, we, we tried to form one with just residents and so forth, but hasn't really taken off, but that's something we're trying to kind of revitalize and have more participants in that. Uh, we're lucky to have a really awesome bicycle commission. Um, and I see two members of it are on this call. So Joanne and Randy, I uh, give them a shout out. Um, and we're lucky that our, our fire chief is our staff liaison, which is a wonderful um, liaison to have uh, connection to the fire department there. So um, they have a bicycle plan. We have it budgeted to update that this year um, and make it an active transportation plan um, to incorporate the, the walkability in there too, which is exciting. Hi, Joanne. <laughs> All right, uh, our next question is for Sergio uh, from Jason. He asks if there's any plans to improve bike pedestrian connectivity over 55. Uh, there's no good way to connect to the Lions, Berwyn, Stickney, Forest View, Cicero from south of the expressway. And he experienced that himself uh, last summer, riding his bike over both Central Avenue and Stickney and Harlem Avenue and Summit. Both roads were scary for him, even being a confident cyclist. Uh, and he wouldn't have considered riding down First Ave or LaGrange since both have freeway interchanges. Yeah, and I, I find that, you know, that's one of the things I've noticed too. It's like from Harlem and Summit all the way to Justice, there's this gap where if we were able to connect it, and that's one of the studies that we did with Justice, Bedford Park and Willow Springs. If we were able to connect that, now you've extended the Centennial Trail along the INN Canal. Um, so there, there is a, I thought it's gonna, is doing a phase one study on the Harlem Avenue bridge. Um, that's one of the things that I, I pose to them. Um, is there a way to make it more bike friendly? Um, so they have that in the comments. Um, we haven't seen any further updates to that plan yet, but again, there's a phase one study on that stretch of um, highway. That, and that's also great that you're partnering with your neighbors. Um, do you, do you, do you, in both of your communities, do you see that, or, or do you try to do that often? Just partner with your neighbors to make sure that communities are connected? I know we have, um, just because we know we want, the, the, the trail is already there. Um, there. There is an existing trail, it just needs to be um, one, one thing allowed access to, but as well as, um, any kind of um, maintenance and improvements that need to be done. Abby and Batavia, do you guys try to work with your neighbors as well? I haven't experienced any partnerships yet. We're, we're connected via the trails, but yeah. um, but we haven't, not I haven't anyway, personally. Yeah. 
All right, so another, oh, I guess this is a comment from Beth um, in Wilmette. She says, our park district has been good about partnering with our community bike and walk groups to co-sponsor in community bike rides for, as an idea for others. And then a question from Ralph, is there a way to involve the school district in walking and biking activities or have you done this, either of you, um, or the, the, your, your city or village? Abby, have you guys worked with your school districts? Um, and I, I think I saw something pop up from Joanne too. Um, we have a walk to, walk to school and a bike to school day that's coordinated with um, the school district. And, um, and Joanne and I had actually worked on the uh, curriculum package for our K through five uh, elementary schools to get walking and biking built into the, uh, to the elementary education component. Um, and, but other than that, I don't, I'm not sure of any other coordination with them. Sergio, what about in Summit? In Summit, we've kind of relied on them when um, there was, we were doing the active transportation plan to uh, send surveys out, set up tables at a couple of their events. Um, and that led to, um, we did bring in a speaker um, to see how we can make um, in that area since the school is pretty much in the corner and there tends to be a lot of congestion during um, arrival and dismissal. We come up with a couple of ideas and plan and we brought in a speaker. Um, to kind of talk to administration as well as, as police and fire and kind of come up with kind of safe ways and proposals to kind of make it a little bit safer um, to commute to the goal. This is a comment to Abby from Ralph. Uh, he's mentioning that the, he's planning to include e-bikes in the forest preserves as a topic for one of his columns in the Daily Herald. Wonderful. Um, Wonderful. And then from Robert, he mentioned, uh, there was some mention of uh, Abby Beck's involvement in America Walks Walk College. And this is the first time he has heard of this group. What's the commitment of time and cost to attend? It costs $100 um, and the rest of it is supplemented through grants. Um, America Walks is a wonderful organization and they've been doing this walking college for, gosh, I don't know how, how long it's been. I see Ann Nagel's on the call too and she's, she's from a class, I think the year before me. Um, it was a series of, I'm gonna get the numbers wrong. I believe it was a six month commitment. Ann might know better than me. I think it was a six month commitment. We had weekly calls. We were grouped in different, um, based on their size of your community. So there was an urban group, there was a rural group and there were mid-sized town groups, suburban groups. Um, so you were grouped with people from around the country that did, um, that lived in areas similar to yours. And you um, went through a series of modules about transportation planning, about uh, transportation equity, about building a campaign, about educational components. It really covered, like the full scope of um, of walking advocacy, and it was it was a fantastic experience. And then you come up with your own action plan for your community, um, and 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 you have a mentor from around the country too um, that that works with you one on one to to work through it. Which it was a fantastic experience. Yeah, I I am. Um trying to find a link for it right now to post in the chat. Um, but it's, yeah, highly recommended if any of you want to, um, you know, see better walkability in your community and get some support putting a plan together. Um, we've had a number, I've known a number of people, including Abby, who have gone through it and Anne, um, and have only heard great things. Um, all right, are there any other questions from anyone? Because we'll, we can wrap up otherwise, but I guess um, just one last question and you've, you two have already kind of touched on this, but it doesn't hurt to say it again, but is there anything advocates can do to support you in the work you're doing? And Abby, why, let's start with you. I'm so sorry, my, my internet just flashed oh, unstable yeah. at me, so I only caught a few of your words there. Oh, um, is there anything advocates can do to support your work? Um, oh gosh, just 
keeping the conversation going and um, uh, keeping in touch. And again, that sharing of resources. I mean, I've had some of the most wonderful and, and inspirational conversations with, with a few people that are on this call, even just sharing stories from other from other communities, being networked with the Active Transportation Alliance, being networked with people around the country. It's, you know, when you feel like I'm all alone in this and am I crazy? Is this a silly thing to be um, to be spending my life advocating for? Um, it's just so great to be in community and to share um, expertise and, and resources. So I'm just really grateful to, to, to have that network. So stay networked, that's my <laughs> advice. <laughs> I like that advice. Um, Sergio, any, anything that advocates can do to support you or just in general community leaders? I think it's highlighting the work that we are doing, um, that everyone's doing here. Um, a lot of times, you know, I, I go to places in, in, in town and say, well, you know, there's a bike trail in the back of the park. Well, you know, there's this and, and it's right in their backyards or, you know, a five minute drive to Portage that's nearby and people don't know it's there. And, and, and part of it is, yes, we have to make it more accessible to everyone because um, not everyone can take their bikes in their car with their kids and, and, and make it, you know, a feasible trip without, you know, planning. It. So it's how do we overcome that and say, yeah, it's, it's there. Now we have to kind of support and, and, and look to our legislators for this is important. We need to start, you know, really investing in this, um, you know, to, especially during this pandemic. I mean, everyone's been cooped up outside. It's got to be uh, essential, not only for their well-being, but for, you know, health and, and long-term, you know, prosperity that they need to be out there and, in, and joining and having access to that. Well, great. Well, um, I think we're, we don't have any more questions. So, um, I really enjoyed the conversation with both of you and just hearing, hearing your perspective of what it's like as a public servant and, and you've both done really great things to advance walking and biking um, in your communities, which helps our whole region and um, appreciate both of you um, taking the time to, to chat with everyone. So thank you. Um, and thank you all for, for joining us. and. Um, yeah, we'll we'll hopefully see see all of you um, throughout the week during Suburban Action Week. So more coming tomorrow. But 